we have our uh, past chairman uh, Ravindra Kuri. Happy welcome, Mr. Kuri. Happy welcome to our uh, president, Panindra Gupta. Welcome to Grand Secretary Divya. And uh, newly elected uh, members uh, for the branch, Manjunath Halur, Rezu, Kavita, Sripath, Chandra Prakash, Pramod. Hearty welcome to each and all. Faculty Madam, hearty welcome. And uh, students, you are the future of this profession. Hearty welcome to each and all of you. And uh, last but most important, our branch advice. You are the reason for this branch uh, day by day is uh, growing and doing fantastic in the nation across. Friends, uh, on this occasion, let me read out some of the facts about uh, our independence, our republic, our constitution. So it is worth remembering all these things. <coughs> Otherwise, uh, we are busy with so many other things, other achievements. Unless we see our past, our history, it is difficult to progress further. In that regard, let me read out some of the important aspects of our constitution, our fundamental duties, our constitution day. Friends, uh, all you aware, we got uh, our we, in, uh, Republic on uh, 26th January. We are in fact celebrating Republic Day on 26th January, starting in 1950. So before that, the Constitution Day, Constitution Day also known as Samidan Tivas, is celebrated in our country on 26th November every year to commemorate the adoption of the Constitution of India on 26th November 1949. The Constituent Assembly of India adopted the Constitution of India which came into effect on 26th January 1950. In fact, the adoption happened on 26th November 1949 and it came into effect on 26th January 1950. Friends, ours is the longest written constitution in the world containing at that time 395 articles, 22 parts and 12 schedules. Today it is 448 articles, 25 parts and 12 schedules. The latest one, 105th Constitution Amendment Act came into effect on 3rd October 2021. That was the 105th Constitution Amendment Act. Friends, uh, our Constitution was not the typeset or the printed one. It was handwritten and calligraphic in both English and Hindi. It was entirely handcrafted by the artist of Shantiniketan under the guidance of Acharya Nandalal Bose with the calligraphy text done by Prem Behari Narain Rajdan of Delhi. The original copies of the Constitution of India are kept in the special helium filled cases in the library of the Par Parliament of India. Each part of the Constitution begins with a depiction of a face or scene from India India's national history. At the beginning of each part of the constitution, Nandala Bose has depicted a face of scene from India's national experience and history. The artwork or illustration, 22 in all, rendered largely in the miniature style, represent the vignettes from the different periods of history of the Indian subcontinent ranging from Mohenjo-daro in the Indus Valley, in the Vedic period, the Gupta and Maurya empires, the Mughal era and national freedom movement. By doing so, Nandalal Bose has taken us through a veritable pictorial journey across 4,000 years of rich history, tradition and culture of the Indian subcontinent. People of India are the ultimate custodians of the constitution. The constitution is nobody's preserve and it is everybody's preserve. When the constitution was adopted in the year 1949, there was no provisions regarding fundamental duties to the citizens though there was a part 3 of fundamental, fundamental rights. The fundamental duties of citizens were added to the constitution by the 42nd amendment in 1976. Upon the recommendation of Swarnasingh Committee that was constituted by the government. 
The committee suggested that steps needed to be taken to ensure that the individual did not overlook his duties while exercise of his fundamental rights. By the way, the 42nd Constitution Amendment Act 1976, a new chapter 4A, which contains of only one article, that is 51A, was added, which dealt with the core of 10 fundamental duties of, for citizens. Fundamental duties are intended to serve as a constant reminder to every citizen that while the constitution specifically conferred on them certain fundamental rights. It also requires citizens to observe certain basic norms of democratic conduct and democratic behavior because rights and duties are co-related. The inclusion of fundamental duties brought our constitution in line with the Article 29.1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and with provisions of several modern constitutions of other countries. The concept of fundamental duties was taken from the USSR. The fundamental duties are essentially taken from the Indian tradition, mythology, religions and practices. Essentially, these were the duties that are the codification of tasks integral to the Indian way of life. Originally, 10 fundamental duties were listed later on by the virtue of 86th constitution, the amendment in the year, 90, in the year 2002, the 11th duty was added. I believe it is worth reading once again to recollect and remember always the fundamental duties, our 11th fundamental duties. I'll read. Please uh, bear with me. Fundamental duties. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to abide by the constitution and respect its ideals and institutions, the national flag and the national anthem. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to cherish and follow the noble ideals which inspired our national struggle for freedom. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to uphold and protect the sovereignty, unity and integrity of India. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to uphold and protect the sovereignty, unity and integrity of India. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to defend the country to re and render national service when called upon to do so. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to promote harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood among us all the people of India transcending religious, linguistic and regional or such sectional diversities to renounce practices of derogatory to the dignity of women. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to value and preserve the rich heritage of our composite culture it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment including forests, lakes, rivers and wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to develop the scientific temper, humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to safeguard public pro property and to abjure violence. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to, say, to strive towards excellence. It shall be the duty of every citizen of India to strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity so that nation constantly rises to higher levels of endeavor and achievement. The last but most important, it shall be the duty of every citizen of India who is a parent or guardian to provide opportunities for education to his child or as the case may be, war between the age of 6 and 14 years. Friends, I like this uh, particularly for the students. So it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to strive act towards excellence in, the all, in all spheres of individual and collective activity so that nation constantly raises to higher levels of endeavor and achievement. It is our duty, friends. As a student, you need to excel whatever you want to do to grow our country, to make our country a developed uh, nation. In that regard, once again, happy Republic Day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman, for your wonderful speech.
and you also remind, uh, reminded us like for India Republic Day is not only celebration but also pride and honor as the constitution came into force and India became republic and all the uh, citizens of India got their basic rights. Thank you once again for your wonderful speech, Chairman. Now I request our immediate past chairman, Sri Ravindra Spore, sir, to please give a uh, welcome address and uh, keynote address. Respected Chairman of Bangalore Branch, CA Bidhi Chetty, and you, our own Southern India representing a member from Shatter Council, C. Rajiv Kumar sir. Today's chief guest, the past Chairman of Bangalore Branch and past Chairman of SIRC, C. Vishnu Bala sir, and recently now recently elected and from February 12th he will be going to get full charge our own member central council CA Kota Sanyo sir and Padindu Gupta and Divi and all the newly elected branch members and students and staff members our chairman is given all the history to the what how the independence and how to that the how the republic day celebration and constitution how is there and like what is the 105 constitution amendment has been happened. One thing I bring to notice that as a chartered accountant, you know, November 26 is the constitution day is celebrating on 1949 and 1950, 26 January is the Republic Day. But before that, the Chartered Accountancy Act will be forced from 1st July 1949. The what the responsibilities in Chartered Accountants, the proud Chartered Accountants members, students, from starting its very few numbers started, the before Republic, the accounting profession is Republic, made it in 1949, say we are proud Chartered Accountants and that's the reason of the Kalamji say we are partners in nation building. Yes, we all be part of the students and members. We need to give up under the variable leadership of our central council. We have to work honestly. Always I used to say think before ink. Our signature is have the most valid signature. So before signature we think very very much and be cautiously work and Yes, our profession will be glorified upcoming day. It is in the hand of members and upcoming all the students. Once again, I wish you all happy Republic Day. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Professor. So now I request CA Kota Sinvasa to please address the gathering. Namaskar, the dignitaries on the dais, the FCS, and uh, the dignitaries of the dais, FCS. On the dais, we have the fellow charter accountants, we have the chairman of uh, Bangalore branch, and the past uh, chairmen of SAS. We have three chairmen of SAS here. One is uh, Mr. Uh, A.S. Vishnubara, the chief guest for the day. Then we have uh, uh, Rajendra Kumar from Chennai, who was also the past chairman of SIRC. The third person standing before you was also the past chairman of SIRC. Then we have the past chairman of Bangalore branch, Ravindra Kore, and uh, the current uh, secretary of uh, Bangalore branch, Divya, and all the newly elected members of the Bangalore branch, Rizzo, Manjuna, Kavita, Chandra Prakash, Pramod, and Sripad. And of course, the next FCS of the future child accountants whom I see who are laying their foundation in this particular hall today. And maybe five years down the line or four years down the line, I would like to see all of you as uh, the future child accountants and the future, uh, future of India as such. Today, we are celebrating the 73rd Republic Day celebration. 
and of course also the independence day because constitution gives us independence so independence day we got the, the political independence but actual independence was given in the constitution so today it's both the constitution day and also republic day and also independence day as such so if i have to split that republic if i have to split that word republic so i can say that it is uh, represented by the public of india you see the constitution the constitution it is uh, by the people of the people and for the people of this country so it, the constitution is uh, represented by the public of india today i was just reading the newspaper of the line i just uh, read because i was supposed to come here while preparing this constitution there were some 40 to 50 members came together to draft this constitution few ladies were also there in that uh, particular group and they were also contributing one of the line was uh, to keep uh, equality to men all men should be treated as equal that was the line in the constitution one lady was there she changed that uh, sentence she changed that sentence not that she added uh, men and uh, women should be equal she she changed that sentence to all human beings should be equal so whatever may be the gender she said that all human beings should be equal under the constitution and the constitution gives various things like uh, it gives freedom as i said it gives justice to the people it gives equality and of course when constitution was made india was not secular subsequently it was made secular by various parties then uh, the rights of the uh, citizens the duties of the citizens and of course the responsibilities of the citizen the chairman has explained to you about the uh, constitution but of course it's a very big uh, uh, i should say uh, a monument or a, what you what i should say it's like a bible like each and every one of us should read that but many of us will not read including me i not read so it's uh, as students i uh, because in cs syllabus we don't have this constitution in acs we have in ca we don't have that particular uh, subject as such even in our uh, curriculum up to bcom final year i have not uh, come across this constitution of india but i feel uh, it should be part of our, our syllabus where we know about our constitution so everybody should uh, make it a point to read when you take some time out of this uh, ca syllabus you have to read this constitution of india also then the constitution as i said uh, it gives rights and uh, duties and also responsibilities to the citizens not only to the citizens even for the institutions as such like uh, we have uh, a country where we have uh, the uh, lok sabha then rajya sabha then we have country india then we have the three states then we have districts taluks hoplis villages so there are all structures are made so everything uh, will come on from the constitution itself everything all the rights and responsibilities administration everything comes from the constitution coming to our profession even uh, the security set up by the act of parliament and we also as the uh, core said they are also partners in nation building how we can be partners in nation building if you see the ministry of finance there are uh, five five to six uh, departments in the under the ministry of finance we have uh, department of expenditure we have department of foreign affairs we have a department of uh, economic uh, this thing then you have department of financial markets and finally you have department of revenue under department of revenue you have got two boards one is cbdt and one is cbic and i am proud to say this is a profession which directly contribute to the department of revenue so the institute of chartered accounts of india that is the institute and its members and students are directly contributing to the department of revenue all of you agree with this because uh, the government budgets uh, every year 30 lakh crores of uh, uh, income in the form of taxes and we the profession <coughs> the members and the students who work day in and day out whether they are in industry or in practice they educate the people of india to pay the taxes so we are directly contributing to the department of revenue we should be proud about our profession that we are contributing to the development of this nation as such then uh, when i say paying taxes for levying the taxes government has got a right and uh, the for paying the taxes it's a duty of each and every citizen usually when you come across uh, the assessees you will come you will they will ask one question why should i pay the tax 
So that's a common question which uh, we, we, we come across with uh, many of the assessees. Of course, still you are in the uh, foundation stage and once you get into the article sheet and once you start meeting the assessees, you will come to know like how uh, the members will react or how the general public will react. So it's a duty of uh, every citizen to pay the taxes and it's a responsibility of all of us to see that they pay the proper taxes. So we have to educate the people and see that they pay proper taxes. And in India, it is uh, it is not uh, considered as a crime if you are not paying the tax. If I don't pay the tax, it's not considered as a sin. So they feel that they'll be happy if they don't pay the tax. So that mindset has to be changed by all of us. So it's not only not paying the tax, not paying proper tax is also a sin. Just uh, somebody should not feel that I am paying the tax so I have done my duty. Paying proper taxes is also a responsibility of a citizen. And uh, it's a responsibility and duty of each and every one of us to see that the proper taxes have been paid by our assessees to the government. So with these few words, once again, I thank the Bangalore Ranch for giving me this opportunity. And I thank all of you to enjoy this uh, Republic Day holiday. I hope today's holiday. So this freedom is there for you. So let us not misuse the freedom, so whatever freedom is there, let us use that freedom to the best of our uh, usage. So misuse also should not be there and uh, we should take advantage, we should not take disadvantage of the freedoms that have been given. So all the best to all of you for all your future endeavors as I said in the earlier uh, uh, sentence, next after 2 to 3 years or maybe next 4 years I would like to see all of you as standard accountants. That is on 26th of January 20. 26. Today is 22, right? Yeah. So 26 January 2026, I would like to see most of your chartered accountants. How many of you are confident of becoming chartered accountants by 20, 26 January 2026? So you can take a photograph. <laughs> a photograph can be taken. You can just raise your hands. So now you are committed that you will become child accountants. It's not half, uh, half hand, full you can enter only, full hand. <laughs> so all the best. Thank you so much for yourself for enlightening us. And let us all take pledge to be a responsible citizens of India and be proud to be part of uh, uh, See a profession as we are partners in nation building. So now I request uh, our own central council members, C. A. Pravin uh, uh, Rajendra Kumar sir, to please address the gentleman. Thank you, sir. The honourable chairman of the Central Branch, C. A. B. D. Shetty, the esteemed. An honourable chief guest, senior past regional council chairman of the SAS of ICTI, CAS Vishnubharat, the newly elected central council member from the state of Karnataka, the past chairman of SAS of ICTI, and my very good friend CA Gupta Srinivas, CA Fanindra Gupta, Ravindra Kore, other branch managing company members who are seated here. Newly elected branch managing committee members, dear students, a warm good morning to each and every one of you. At the outset, I sincerely congratulate CA Kota Srinivas for his stupendous victory in the Central Council elections which recently concluded in December. And I am confident that the amount of services that he had did for the SIRC of ICAI as regional council member and as chairman of the region. He will continue and he will also add to the services and the time that uh, he will spend for the mother body that is our institute, the chief policy making council of the ICPI. It is a proud privilege to be amongst uh, all of you and on this very happy occasion I greet you and I also remember that our institution, the Institute of Chartered Accounts of India was formed much before the India became Republic, much before the constitution was adopted by all of us. In fact, uh, I remember it was in May 1949 
that the ICAI's uh, act was formally adopted by the then Constituent Assembly and uh, in, the, in the month of uh, July, exactly on July 1st, uh, the said act was notified, the provisions of the ICAI act was notified. So that is the amount of uh, uh, trust, confidence that the Government of India, the then Constituent Assembly had with this great body. Times have changed, we have been changing with the times, but then the words uh, trust and confidence that always remain and they will never change. And uh, as all of you have uh, agreed today to become Chartered Accountant by 2026, 20, I am confident that you will also ensure that this trust and confidence which is there, and which has emboldened us in all these years will certainly be there with all of you. And I know you will not end only with Chartered Accountancy, there are many more uh, education degrees that, can, that will add to your stature, to your value and will continue to be a student for life. Congratulations to each and every one of you and best wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Orchestra, for your wonderful speech. So now, the most awaited speech of our chief guest is uh, there. So for this, before I hand it over to Mr. Barista, so to give a brief introduction about our chief guest, he is a transformational leader with a rare blend of uh, blend of an educationalist, social activist, and humanist. Hailing from a well-known and respected family, he represents the ideal of a public person who commands respect from whomsoever he comes into contact by what he stands for and demonstrate in his attitudes, actions, and behavior. At present, he is a practicing senior chartered accountant. Practicing as a senior chartered accountant from past 48 years, he is a senior vice president of APS Educational Trust Bangalore. He is a executive president of Karnataka Federation of United Nations UNESCO. He is a president of Vasu Vidya Nikitan Trust. He is a chairman of PHF Company Limited Transit Living Service Apartments. He is a chairman of Vinyasa Trust for Differently Challenging. He is a trustee of RSS Trust. RB Institutions, Bangalore. He is a president of Sri Vasavi's Elite like Silver Star KCD of Club. He was a, our own chairman of Bangalore Branch and also chairman of SIRC of ICAI. And during his chairmanship, he was awarded as the best regional award, uh, best chairmanship award. And also, he is a managing committee. He was managing committee member of FKCCI from past 18 years. He is a president. Of, he was a president of Vasavi Senior Charitable Trust, and for his services to social, uh, for his services, he has been uh, awarded as an honorable doctorate and contribution uh, for contribution to society received from Mangalore University. He is also awarded a, 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 for honorary professorship, a professorship for communication skills by Tumkur University. He was uh, he is also awarded as Nada Prabhu Kempegoda Award by BBMP 2017. And he is also authored more than 50 books on life and uh, motivational uh, and uh, related to society. So, with this very brief introduction, I once again present to you, we are present before you, CA Vishnu Bharat sir, and your host. Thank you. Very good morning to all of you. At the outset, let me extend the greetings of 73rd Republic Day to all the Chartered Accountants, the students of Chartered Accountants in particular, and to the citizens of India. This is a great day we should celebrate. And I am happy to have the company of the son of Karnataka, Mr. Kota Shenwas, the son-in-law of Karnataka, Mr. Bhatyandar Kumar, and of course my good friend, Mr. Kore and Mr. Panendra Kumar, and I am extremely thankful to the Chairman, Mr. B.T. Shetty, for remembering me on this great occasion. I have been doing the unfolding the flag of the country in several places, educational institutions and several other places. Coming to the Mother Institute and doing it was a great honor. And I am So being the last batsman, my only aim is to 
ETL, running, I mean, winning run. All about constitution has been told. So I have listed all those things. And my job is made very easy. Let me tell you, my dear friends, if at all you want to see the constitution of India, you can visit RB Public Institute, which is there in Jainagar. We have the duplicate, exactly the photocopy of the constitution, which is kept in the same manner as if you can see in the Delhi, and with the signatures of all the freedom fighters, the parliamentarians who have signed the constitution, and you is an open library, you can always visit and you will be really proud to see how it is there. And there is a chance for you to turn the pages. That is another fact involved. And so artistically it is done, you can see the signatures of all these people. And it is really, I mean, interesting to watch. See, Indian constitution was adopted on, no doubt, on 26th of January 1950. Of course, the independence was in 1947, the constitution was, I mean, open to the public on 26th November, no doubt. This is the day we have to remember all our freedom fighters. They have put their whole and soul, they have given their lives for the country. Who knows, many of you are the people who are freedom fighters and you took a rebirth, do not know. Their contribution cannot be explained. I mean, some of us, I mean, most unfortunately, none of them are there today. Most of them have already parted. And very few of us know what exactly happened, how the things were there, how it has been handled. And it is a heart-burning thing to go about how the freedom struggle was there. And I sincerely request, I think I mean, I mean, you will be knowing it, to recollect your memory, these 25 people have to be remembered, not only them, but all those who fought for the country. Mahatma Gandhi, Subhash Chandra Bose, who has just completed 125 years, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, Jawaharlal Nehru, Lal Bahudur Shastri, Bhagat Singh, Dada Bhai Naroji, Kope, Bipin Chandra Pal, Lala Lajpat Rai, Balganga Dhatilak, Asitullah Khan, Nana Sahib, Sukhadev, Kunwar Singh, Mangal Pandey, Vinayak Damodar Sarwakar, Sri Rajgopal Achari, Ram Prasad Bismil, Chandra Shekhar Azad, Rani Lakshmi Bhai, who happens to be from Karnataka, Kittu Chennama, Begum, Begum, Hasat Mahal, and several others. And several others. May I request all of you to rise up and pay our deepest respect and pray for them to, re to take rebirth in this nation. See, whenever we go abroad, we will look in good hotels 
and we see the best places after it. And she doesn't go to the remote corners of the country and she thinks everything is grown. So that is not a concept. <laughs> I'm the one who will tell, I say even in India it is all good things are there, but you know, India cannot be compared to any other country because they're all very small provinces like that. And India is so huge with so many religions, so many of people. I mean, 130 crore people except China, there's no other country. So it's not to be comparable at all. And that's the reason, you know, always I praise my country and all of you should inculcate that habit of being patriotic. Republic Day is celebrated, of course, in Delhi. The President of India, I mean, on the eve of Republic Day, he gives a speech and also the, there is going to be a ceremonious parade and this is the time to exhibit our defense, our uh, navy, our, uh, I mean, all cultural activities, all these things. And this is not all about that. See, this constitution was made by Mr. Ambedkar and his B.R. Ambedkar and his uh, members of the constitution committee was Krishna Swami Ayer, Muhammad Samyullah, Manik Lal, Vijayendra Lal and Durga Prasad. These are the people who have sat day and night for two years, 11 months, 18 days for making this constitution of India. And it was thrown open to the public and then it became finally on 26th of 1950, January, it was made as the constitution and it was adopted. What do this constitution gives us? No, right to equality, right to right of freedom, right against exploitation, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, cultural and educational rights, rights of constitutional remedies, and many more. Just imagine the absence of any one of them. No, you feel that you are lost. Just to cite an example, recently, you know, I, my bedroom and restroom are all decorated with flowers. My daughter, I mean, because this uh, I mean, flowers attracts fungus, has removed all those flowers at a time I mean, before I come to house. And I was disturbed and I yelled at her just for the disappearance of the flowers. And afterwards, when I was preparing what to speak today, I was knowing I and mean, knowing that our freedom fighters had to, I mean, tolerate so many things that Britishers, they had no freedom of expression, freedom of speech. What they wanted, they would not have been told. So that type of uh, things were there. And for the small thing, I was disturbed. So these are the things which we have to learn from the freedom fighters and actually we should go through the freedom struggle. Then only we know what is the importance of the Independence Day and Republic Day. My, I would also like to share my experience when I was in UK. So the first thing you know, we have, normally we used to go in the hotel but we had, when British family had invited us we had we were Facebook friends and we went to their house for a stay. It's very rare, you know, the Britishers make us stay in their home. The first thing, you know, I had to take bath. So first they have asked me, well, are you sure that you want to take the everyday bath? Yes, I said, of course. Then, you know, they gave me one uh, bucket of water and one mug. I mean, not mug, I'm sorry, this tumbler. I said, what for? I wanted a bigger one, let me have a shower. No, no, I'm so sorry. This is not India for you to have bath as you like it. The full restroom and the toilet is carpeted and you cannot have that freedom. You can only make your body wet and come out. Otherwise, there are no servants to clean up. There are no things like that. This is the life they are leading. And after coming out, when I was interacting with them, he expressed to me in the breakfast this one that 
you are all having a princely life. I said, what do you mean? The life which you have foregone and gone, you know, we have been enjoying. No, you are not realizing. He said, he just gave an example. You take, uh, I mean, you have to write a letter to me. What do you do? I said, I go to office, I call my sister, no, I dictate to her. She types it out, I sign up and I give it to her. She uh, makes the process of uh, posting it to you and this one. All that work I have to do. There is nobody else here to do. So this is the thing you are not realized. There are people who are working for you. There are people who do everything for you. You are not realizing what we are, I mean, the real values of the life. So these are the things which we have to look into really. Not exactly what I mean, the things are happening there. Everything is gloomy. But if you go near things, you know, you know the reality. I was also looking at the most patriotic nation in this world is Israel. Israel. Right from the child to the old man, everything is patriotic. It is integrating the blood itself. I was wondering why this is not happening in our country. You know, my friends, I recently I must tell you, you must all seen it. There was a TV interview of the students. I wish they would have come to our chartered accountant students to know what is our chartered accountants. Fifty people were interviewed. None of them were able to tell what is the Republic Day. None of them. They said, oh yes, we have a holiday. We said, I mean, to go and see the TV, the parade in the Delhi. This is a day to be celebrated. Such, I mean, general things they are talking about and they were not even, not even one were able to tell the constitution of India was adopted. This is a very state of, a sorry state of affairs. I wish the branch, the chairman, I request the branch chairman and also SIRC and the central council, sir, on this Republic Day and Independence Day, let there be students, you know, there is a debate competition, there is a essay competition, there can be an enactment of the drama, so that our children will learn it. So let us not be the general education. See, the chartered accountants are all around us. We are privileged to give the, to the educate the public. And we are able to convince them. We are able to, I mean, tell about our nation, our this one, not only the revenue part of it, which we take care of it. But let us all do it so that one day we can outbeat the Israelis. And I was also looking at the going in detail how it has come in Israel like that. So right from the childhood, the family educates them to the I mean uh, the national service, the national importance, the na I mean everything about the nation. And you know they serve voluntarily for two years in their life for the nation without any remuneration, just give a food and shelter and they work for the nation. These are the things which we have to do it. This is a mother country. I mean, apart from our parents, we have to, the most respect is our nation. If we do not do it, who else will do it? And we have a wonderful Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi. He is showing us the path. So let us follow him. Just follow him and give a helping hand and we will be able to do our little bit to the nation and the nation will become mighty nation. So I am so happy that, you know, in the uh, entire world, India is looking at the fourth or fifth place now. It was there in 26th or 27th place. About the Republic, what I, I mean, they have missed it, let me also tell you. Before independence, there were 540 provinces all over the India having small, small I mean, people, I mean, provinces and they used to fight on each other and make it. Sattar Vallabhai Patel is the one who I mean, made them to be united and be in one country. And you know, we, I mean, we proud to be Karnataka, I mean, the, the first and foremost province in Karnataka has given the voice that yes, we will be united and all the 540 provinces joined later. 
Unfortunately, the province of Mysore Maharaja and, and, and in Hyderabad Nizam, they were not a part of this. They gave the, uh, I mean, the, uh, out of this. So, outwards, of course, they also joined that one. Sardavar Vallabhai Patel, the Iron Man of India, has to be saluted for the things what he has done. Imagine 540 provinces, all of them were the kings and they used to be their own world and they came together and become in India. So this is the one which, I mean to rule all this, this one, there was a Government of India Act 1935, Britishers are made and that was made as the constitution in 1950 which was adopted. And uh, we all are fortunate to be the chartered accountants, of course future chartered accountants there. This is the best course you have chosen. I would like, definitely like to congratulate you. But you are, I was told that you are in the foundation course. Take it as a challenge. Put your whole and soul. This is the nation, this is the profession which gives you not only glory to yourself, your family, your uh, I mean, the entire outer family, every thing you will get it in this life. See, my dear young friends, I was qualified in 1973. What we could not even dream of it, you are seeing the reality. And your future is much brighter scope you have. So what we could not even dream of, you can look into it. And you do not know the future of yourself. You may be, your destiny will not, not known. Because once you are qualified, you are open to the whole world. And you do not know which part of the world you will be. And this is the profession which will put you in the highest esteem and delight. You are very fortunate to have chosen this course, but put your whole and soul. But this is not a course just walk in and talk, walk out. This is the course which you have to concentrate, you have to put your mind, and you are bound to get it. So I mean, there is no um, threat or anything for the of you, but the institute is regulating, the institute is controlling and all that. That is all past story. This is the thing which is being recognized and the brightest of bright will definitely come out and you will have to face the world and you will be proud chartered accountant. <coughs> And, uh, let me also repeat, sir, let the branch in, uh, introduce for the first time that the Bangalore branch, the debate competition on the freedom and the Republic Day and let it to start from Bangalore and go all over the India so that the patriotism will uh, be integrated in the students. So I def today is the day to reaffirm our commitment to unity of diversity, fraternity and equality among our citizens. So I would end my speech saluting my nation and requesting all of you to be most patriotic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause for our wonderful speech. And as uh, the Register of Self rightly uh, spoken about the constitution, importance of relation, importance of patriotism, and also uh, two years, eleven months, and eighteen days it took for the constitution to get molded, and then uh, finally got adopted. And uh, under the chairmanship of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, so he is the father of our constitution. So once again, uh, thank you so much for your wonderful speech, sir. So, the details on the desk, please join us in felicitate in the chief place, uh, Dr. Mr. sir, on this occasion. I request you also to please come forward and join. <coughs> Years as chartered accountant next year.
ladies and gentlemen. I take this privilege to give formal vote of thanks for today's uh, Republic Day celebration. I thank you uh, on behalf of Bangalore Banks and entire management committee of Bangalore Banks. I thank C. A. Vishnuparak sir for uh, accepting our invitation and coming here and uh, addressing the gathering. Thank you so much once again, sir. Bangalore uh, Kumar sir, Kota Sinha sir, and all the members and all the students who are here for uh, patiently listening from the morning. Thank you once again, one and all. <laughs> Let us conclude by playing national anthem. So I request everyone to please thank you for national anthem. Shubha 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 Shubha